Namaste, everyone, and welcome to Anchor Delight. So this is part two for Friday, again, Friday here in the United States and Saturday everywhere else. So um, before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tuakok Sui, Mahaguji Meiling, we humbly ask for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. So it is. Right, so I hope that you joined us for the earlier session for emotional healing, for re releasing anger. Now, this session, we're doing prosperity healing for procrastination. That's why we've used this a few times before, and some of you have seen it. Purging procrastinating energies. You go, okay. See, oftentimes, people don't realize a few things. Number one, the tendency to delay is due to many reasons, right? Most of you notice. It could be due to fear. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. So you just kind of put it off. It could be because of laziness, right? Yeah, do it later. All of us go through this. Or it could be, what if I do it? Now I'm committed. Right? Now, there's one more factor most people don't know of. It is the psychological function of your energy centers or your chakras. That's the part that most people don't know, so that's what I'm going to focus on right now. Then we'll tie it together. <clears throat> for example, your heart center is a center for love. So that's the psychological function. Its physical function is your heart chakra absorbs life force, feeds energy to your heart, your lungs, respiratory and circulatory system, and your thymus gland. Your throat chakra feeds energy to your throat, to your voice box. Psychologically, it's the chakra that allows you to express yourself, either create creatively, paint pictures, art. That's your throat chakra. <clears throat> okay? Your basic chakra, the base of the spine, it's psychological function. Well, let's start with the physical. The physical function is to give energy for your bones, muscles, blood, body temperature, and cell repair. Translation, it's the chakra of youthfulness. You keep your basic chakra strong and healthy, you could, your physical, your chronological age could be whatever, 30, 50, 100, whatever years old, but your physical body behaves like that and acts like it, heals and maintains itself like that of a much younger person. So the basic chakra is the chakra of youthfulness. Okay? Now, that same energy center, the chakra at the base of your spine, is in charge of survival, productivity, and prosperity. I just happen to have an image here. All right. Some of you have seen this before. I'll show it again. It's from the Primary Healing Books. So you have the energy centers, the basic chakras at the base of the spine. Okay? So you have 11 major chakras. <clears throat> I know some of you said, is that the root center? You see... A lot of you are still new, so I assume that you've studied the seven chakra model. The seven chakra model, it's interesting. It's a way for us to get started, but it's not complete. If your body only has seven chakras, your body will die. <laughs> Simple as that. So you've 11 major chakras. Anyway, that's not, <coughs> that's not a topic today. But just to give you an idea, each of these chakras have physical functions as well as psychological one. Now, we want to focus on the, <coughs> on the basic chakra. The basic chakra... This is extremely, extremely important. When the basic chakra is weak, your body feels fatigued. You don't have the drive to do anything. <clears throat> your body's always tired. Your bones, your muscles are weak. That's the basic chakra. So when the basic chakra is strong, however, your body could be chronologically old, but physically you're very, very vibrant. That's why you notice there are people who are chronologically old. You find, oh, wow, you're 70, you're 80. You look like you're 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever. Part of it has to do with the basic chakra. Either they're actively doing something about it or not. Okay, that's a physical function. Now, psychologically, that same energy center allows you to produce results, get things done. It's a chakra of action. So when a person has a tendency to procrastinate, that basic chakra is weak. Make sense? So let's do a simple experiment so you have a better understanding. Otherwise, it's just, uh, it's interesting, whatever. Okay, rub your hands together. Imagine you're looking at your own back. Your basic chakra is in the back. The sex chakra is in the front. I know some of you said, I thought it's just one line. Yeah, one line in the front, one line in the back. It's like a highway going all around your body. You have 
on and off ramps in the front, on and off ramps in the back. Those are your chakras. So the basic chakras are base of the spine. You know, just like if these are your butt cheeks, it's like flowers sticking out like that. So imagine you look at your own back, put your hand like this, and just say, my prosperity center. Just say it. My basic chakra, my prosperity center. So you're just trying to get a feel of the, its energy level. <clears throat> okay? So, ready? Just bring your hands out, say, my prosperity center. Then once you feel like something, stop. That's your baseline measurement. All right. Now, can you think of something that you need to do that you've been holding off? Procrastinating. Not because there are legitimate reasons, or it could be, but you just say, eh, I'll do it later. Pick one. <laughs> Some of you go, I have a list of lists. No, just pick one. Okay? Whatever that one task that you need to do, repeat after me. Say, I'll do this later. I'll wait longer. Basically, you're procrastinating. Say, I'll, uh, I'll wait later. Done? Okay. Put your hand like this. Say my prosperity center. What happened? It shrunk. It has less energy. Now go like this. <clears throat> say, I decree. Or just say, I will and decree. I will, you know, you will decree, like you say it with such force. I will and decree. I will get this done immediately. So be it. Say it. I will get this done immediately. So be it. So be it. As I will it, so be it. Mean it, huh? Okay. Bring your hands out. See my prosperity center. What happened? How many can you notice that it's stronger? All right. This is just a very, very rough <clears throat> experiment. So that gives you an idea. Every time you procrastinate, all of us do, you're weakening your prosperity center. But as soon as you say, I'm going to do it, the chakra gets big. It's temporary until we follow through. The question is why? When you intend to do something, that chakra will enlarge because it goes, ooh, you need more energy to get things done. It sucks in more life force, so your basic chakra gets bigger. Okay? But if we don't use it by following through, we just, you know, yak, 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 talk, talk, talk. You know, some people, it's, it's all about intention. Yeah, your life's still a mess. Obviously, intention alone is not good enough. You need follow through. So when you follow through, or as Tony Robbins says, taking massive action towards your goal, that chakra absorbs that life force, holds on to it, and keeps using it. And that's as you need more energy to get it done because you're doing it, it draws more energy. So it keeps the basic chakra big. That's why there's a saying, you want to get something done, give it to someone who's busy. Their basic chakra is like a like a turbine. Right? I know a lot of you are moms. Let me ask you a question. How many of you, you have already, you already have so many responsibilities at home and maybe at work, and you're still volunteering for parent-teacher association projects? Right? But you're so busy. Yet somehow, in that busyness, you already created a certain pattern. Get it done. Prioritize. Get it done. Prioritize. Get it done. That's because your basic chakra is very, very active. Now, on the other hand, if you have someone who likes to procrastinate, I'll give you an example. Uh, I don't want to name names. There's this person. <coughs> He's a volunteer. So he wants a volunteer to help spread panic healing and all that, right? Okay. So I asked him to do one task. Something that probably takes... Half an hour to an hour the most. You know, you drive somewhere, do this, do that, and you're done. One hour, give maximum. So I said, uh, okay, could you do this, please? You, after all, you're volunteering. She goes, oh, I'm too busy. Okay. So somebody else took the task. Then I was thinking, how busy could this guy be? He's unemployed. He's unemployed. He doesn't have work. How busy can a guy be who's not working? Somebody who took the job, took the, the task, is somebody who's already busy. He's got two kids or three kids doing something else. I'll do it. Get the idea? No wonder this guy's broke. 
So there's the emotional mental pattern and there's the chakra pattern. We do both. So as I explain this to you, you go, oh yeah, so that means I need to follow through and get this done. That helps you with the emotional mental stuff, yes? Then we also have to work on the chakra because every time we procrastinate, we think of, oh, it would not work, or I got too many things to do, or whatever stupid excuses we make, all of us make it, including me. <laughs> I used to, used to be the king of it. In fact, my mom used to say, and this was embarrassing, uh, this is before I got into pranic healing. Every time we see some relative or, or whatever, you know, just a little kid, maybe 10, 12 years old, she would go, oh, this is my son. Okay. And then he goes, she goes, you know, she, he procrastinates so much, he only builds a toilet when he's ready to go poo-poo. I'm going, mom, most of the time parents are proud of their kids. You're not exactly, I mean, I don't say that, but I'm going, oh, great, here's another one. Now, she's not lying. Before I met my teacher, I used to delay everything. Ah, do it later. Uh, <clears throat> lazy ass, <laughs> basically. Then when I met my teacher, I said, Master, I want to spread panic healing. Okay, good. Do it. Yes, Master. I didn't realize that I have to be accountable. So every time I see him, every year he comes, okay, how many students have you taught? Oh, Master, I'm still planning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next time I see him, maybe six months later. Oh, so what areas have you opened up to teach? Oh, I'm still working on it. By then he knew. <laughs> he knew. I was just like, yak, 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 not doing anything. So he became very strict. He said, okay, make a plan. What are you going to do? Um, I said, my intention is to open this area. What have you done? Uh, uh, what kind of plan have you have? Um, uh, Write it, sit down, write it down for me. Oh, oh now? <laughs> you will stop. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Okay. When do you want to accomplish it? Uh, sometime. <laughs> he was stop. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with details. Essentially, he was so strict with me. Every time I see him, he would expect, okay, how many have you produced? How much have you done? Results, results, results. This went on for easily 15 years. Of course, it became less and less because at some point I got it, you know, not that dense. At first I was. So in 2007, after he left his body, I couldn't stop. So people call me workaholic. I go, no, I'm not. I'm just not lazy anymore. As far as I know. <laughs> Get the idea? Because he changed the way I thought. And then he taught me chakra energy techniques to clean the basic chakra, remove these old thought forms that I've created before. That's what I'm offering to you. So as you first understand it, and then tonight after the med <coughs> meditation, we're going to clean your basic chakra. Just, you just need one thing to make this really work. You know what it is? Be honest with yourself. Master Joe used to say, we have to practice ruthless self-honesty. Instead of saying, yeah, you know, I was lazy, I was procrastinating, okay, let's do it. What do we do? Well, you know, there's so many circumstances. I'm so busy doing this and this and... Translation? Excuses. So instead of saying, yeah, I screwed up, let's fix it. You say, well, you know, circumstances are... So your mind, you're so intelligent, so sharp, you come up with all these cockamamie excuses, and nothing works. You just to be honest. I screwed up. Okay, enough. From here on, I'm just going to keep moving forward. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this done. And one of the favorite phrases, <clears throat> I've talked to a few people, they said they've even learned in, in elementary school or high school, Write this down. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Because that's another excuse. They go, some of you go like, oh, I think I'm going to sign off now. This guy is too direct. Well, bye. See you earlier. <laughs> Oftentimes, the excuse we use not to get something done, well, I'm a perfectionist. No, you're lying to yourself. Period. Admit it. 
You're not a perfectionist, although you like things to be good, but you're using perfectionism as an excuse not to take action. Sounds familiar? I know, some of you are probably going, I can believe he's insulting me. Okay, bye, go find another teacher who will babysit you. I won't. We call it like it is. Either you're lazy, you're making stupid excuses, or you're afraid of something. Period. You don't get over it, we're going to be having this conversation next lifetime. <laughs> Hopefully not. So that's the part nobody can help you with. You have to have that realization. Okay. Maybe I should stop <laughs> surfing the internet with useless websites for two, three hours and I get this done. Maybe I should stop scrolling through social media, looking at useless stuff and reading useless posts by people who just like to gossip so I can get this done. Whatever. All of us have excuses, right? Just admit it. I should stop doing that. I could use that time, get this task done. And you'd be shocked. Once you do it, you go, wow, it actually feels good. Okay? So get that in there. So if you'd like to, write this down. I've shared this with many of you before. What did uh, Tony Robbins and uh, Jim Rohn say? Repetition is the mother of skill. Here's what you do. Write this down. This is how you get anything done. Number one, write down the question, what? What is your objective? What is your goal? What is the target? You need to define it. You don't define it. It's just like shooting in the dark, I should call it. What is the objective? Number two, why you want it? Why do you need to finish that paper? Why do you need to go to this place to talk to this person? Why do you need to get yourself a job? Why do you need to make more money? Why do you have to improve your health? Why? If the why is strong enough, or as Tony Robbins says, how big is your why? When you meet obstacles, when things are not going your way or not going as planned, you keep on keeping on. The why is giving, it's the one that gives you the motivating force within you. So what, why, how, how is important. I know some people say, well, you know, it'll just come to me. No, sit down and figure that out. What are the tasks? You cannot say, you know, I want a better job. Mm, that's my target. Okay, good. How much you want to make? You make it. You rate the time. Why do you want it? Because I'm tired of my old job. I need to pay more bills, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Good. You got the what and why. When it comes to the how, here's what people do. They use spiritual teachings. Well, you know, the universe will just download it. If it's for me, it will just come to me. No, sit your ass down. Write down the task to get there. Do I need to polish my resume? Do I need to talk to the right people? Do I need to apply? All of those are tasks that are super important. None of this, I'm still waiting for the download. You'll be waiting for another 20, 30 lifetimes and nothing gets done. What? Why? How? And here's the critical part. You heard me say this a thousand times. When? <clears throat> when are you going to execute on any of these tasks? When? Oh, I'll file that application. When? Well, sometimes, look, there you go, you're procrastinating, that'll never happen. When are you going to talk to the right people that might get you a better job or more income opportunities? When? Um, sometimes, oh, forget about it. So when I'm talking to someone, when I get to the when, that's how I know if they're serious or not. If you're a parent, talk to your children. Mom, I'm going to get better grades. Dad, I'm going to clean up my room. There's one question to know if they're serious or not. When? If they say, I'll get it done today, I'll it, and give you a definite time, you know that guy's serious. So for every task, you should assign a timeline. This is saying in the Chinese tradition. A schedule without the timeline or without the deadline is just a wish. Doesn't mean anything. Hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. You know, let's have lunch. And the person says, yeah. And you go, okay, when? Give me a, give me a number. Let's talk. Uh, well, I'm busy. I'm not sure. Then you know they're not serious. It never happened again. How many times has that happened to us, right? The magic word is when. 
the minute you put a schedule on it, that is that. That's how you know. Okay? That's how you know when. And the last part is the easy part. Do it. So what, why, how, and when. You get to the when part and you're serious about it, the executing is easy because you already have a template to follow. Okay, this I need to get done by this date, this I need to get done. Okay, get it over with. Move on. Move it. Boom, 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 like that. By the way, as you seriously do this in anything you do, it could be your health, your relationships, or anything you're working with, your basic chakra starts expelling. It starts expelling the old thought forms you created. It forces the chakra to spit out what is not helping you get to your objective. How much did I charge you for this session? Zero. I'm not charging you. You don't do it, it's your problem. Your loss. It's that simple. What is my objective? <clears throat> Why do I want it? What are the things I need to do? What are the tasks I need to do to get there? And when do I want them? And just execute. Some of you are going, this is supposed to be a spiritual talk. Yeah, it is. You want to help a lot of people? You want to go feed hungry people? That's your objective? Why? It's a nice thing to do. Then that's it. It'll never happen. If you go, I need to feed these hungry people because, just like Tony Robbins, you know, growing up, he had a difficult time. He didn't have anything to eat. So for him, it's a burning, it's a burning desire to go help feed hungry people. How? Well, he, he made himself so successful that his goal was to feed, was that a billion meals in 10 years? He was able to do it something like seven years. And now he raised his goal again to something like 100 billion meals or something like that. Some crazy objective that I know he definitely will get there. Why? Because he already has the pattern. You just follow. Step one, step two, step three, step four. None of this, I'm waiting for the inspiration. You're just giving stupid excuses. Admit it, get over it, move on. Now to help you, we'll do a short meditation. We'll clean out your basic chakra. We'll scrape all that crap out of your basic chakra so that you don't have those limiting thought forms and beliefs from before anymore. Okay? All right, let's do it. Sorry, I was a little too harsh on you. It's just this thing really gets me because I know what it's like to sit there and just make like, stupid excuses and not get anything done. And then when my teacher finally disciplined me, I go, where were you 20 years ago? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> shall we? I am that I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion or the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine power. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. You say we are one. Now imagine all of us are inside the big bright sun looking out into the solar system. We're going to use the great invocation, a powerful prayer to bless the earth. So open your hands like this, just like we do in meditation twin hearts. You say we are one. Now project a brilliant beam of light collectively through the sun and fill up the entire earth. I know a lot of you knew, just silently follow, or verbally if you like. Let's chant Om three times. Om. 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 From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being, let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend <coughs> throughout the entire earth. <clears throat> May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being. 
the purpose which the holy masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. From the center which you call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth. So be it. Now just be still and let the blessings flow through us. Again, <clears throat> from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being, let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being, let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, a purpose which the Holy Masters and spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. May it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth. So be it. So be it. Now for the third great invocation, imagine a brilliant golden flame floating above your head. Just put your complete attention and awareness on that beautiful golden light. Just be still. Put your attention on that brilliant light and listen. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the Holy Masters know and serve. Let goodwill and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth, so be it. From the center which we call the human race and all the other different races, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth. Let light, love, and power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Just be still. Blessings be to all. Let's chant Om. Om, Om, Om. Now gently put your hands down. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just be still. Meditate on that brilliant light. Meditate on the silence, the inner stillness, and that brilliant light. Take your time. Meditate properly.
Now, maintain your stillness and awareness. Just be still. This will be done for you. The brilliant lights point down to your crown. Your crown chakra is being cleansed. Okay, visualize a violet fire in front of you, or if you have salt water next to you, the brilliant divine energies point down to your crown. Your crown chakra is being cleansed. Your forehead, your Ajna chakra, and between your eyebrows are being cleansed. All negative tossing of energies in your crown, your brain, your back head are dissolved, disintegrated, expelled to the nearest violet fire or salt water to you. Your throat chakra is being cleansed. All negative tossing of energies disintegrated, expelled to the salt water or violet fire in front of you. Your front and back heart chakras are gently being cleansed. Your front and back solar plexus chakras, any stress, anger, resentment, anxiety, to getting things done are dissolved, disintegrated, expelled to the salt water or violet fire in front of you. Down, down, your navel chakra is being cleansed, your sex chakra is being cleansed, the divine energy is pouring down your spine to your basic. We're going to focus on the basic chakra. Be still. Just put your gentle attention on the base of your spine. Just form the intention. Any type of procrastinating energies, any type of unworthiness to be successful, any type of Poverty consciousness, thoughts, opinions, ideas, either you generated or somebody told you. Just be aware that they're now being loosened and disintegrated. Disintegrate, disintegrate, expel, remove to the salt water, violet fire in front of you. So your basic chakras continues to be cleansed. All these poverty consciousness, thoughts, energies, lack of motivation, procrastinating energies, these are dissolved, disintegrated by the brilliant, brilliant divine energy. They are being completely Disintegrate, extract, or expel to the violet fire or salt water next to you. Your basic chakra is being cleansed. All these negative thoughts and energies are dissolved, disintegrated, expelled to the salt water now. So be it. The violet fire in front of you. Think of something you've been procrastinating on. If you're willing to let it go, say, I'm letting it go. Okay, that's all you got to do. Dissolve, disintegrate with a brilliant, brilliant divine energy. All these negative thoughts, these energies for procrastination that you're mentioning or intending to release are dissolved, disintegrated, completely cut, expelled through a salt water violet fire in front of you. Your basic chakra is being cleansed of all these procrastinating energies. So be it. Just be receptive. Your salt water by fire in front of you. Just be still. Your basic chakra is being healed. May you be blessed with abundance and prosperity and success. So it is. Okay, just be receptive. You don't have to do anything. Just be still and let it assimilate and absorb. Now repeat after me, I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies. So be it. So be it. So it is. Put your hand like this. You see, all these negative thoughts, negative energies, procrastinating energies, cut, disconnect, throw it into a violet fire that you visualize. The salt water disintegrates. Okay. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, to my teacher, Master Chokok Sri Mahaguji Mailing. Thank you. In full faith, so it is. Okay. Open your eyes. Okay. Ask yourself a simple question. Think of the things that you wanted to let go. Things that um, you're either afraid to do, you don't want to do, you've been procrastinating on. As you think about it, how does it feel to you now? Does it feel like you still want to put it off? You're just like, I don't know, why are waiting so long? It's, I should just do it. That means that thought form was released. Okay? Now, if you're still feeling that hesitation and your mind is already congruent, your emotions, just whatever feeling is holding you back, that limiting belief or thought form is still in your basic chakra. Anyway, we leave these videos online. You can watch it again, fast forward to the healing, and just sit there and flush it out. You'd be shocked what could happen. You know why? There's one more thing I forgot to tell you. Your behavior affects your chakras, right? Your behavior puts negative thought forms or positive thought forms in your chakras. As you clean your chakras and put it in the right place, your chakras now affect your behavior. That's the secret. 
All right. So I wish you a fantastic weekend. Um, let's see. For the ones who don't, <coughs> don't know it yet, three powerful full moons. One just went by. The video is still online. Uh, there's a Wesak festival, the most powerful one of the year. That's coming up in April. And then the distribution of energy, the full moon of Gemini, it's going to be the month after, which is also the Buddhist Wesak festival. Okay. And in preparation, for some of you who have not registered yet, we have the seven-day purification. There's the QR code there. Just go to the website. You can either go with a lecture, you want to go to lecture and uh, lecture meditation, or with the healing, whatever you want. We want to hear, but we want to be here to serve you. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. Let's give thanks. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, personally, to my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tokok Sui Mahaguru Jameling, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Okay, as we say in the Asian tradition, may you be happy, healthy, and wealthy. Namaste, God bless, take care, and we will see you soon. Yeah.